discovery of oil in Nigeria as far back as 1956 was greeted with optimism. This, however, comes as no surprise, as oil and gas are, after all, the world's most important source of energy and feedstock for much of today's economy and wealth for governments around the globe through its extensive supply. Unfortunately, the discovery of oil, which was supposed to lead to an economic boom, resulted in the doom of Nigerians, with the Niger Delta region, which is rich in oil, becoming a theater of crisis. The military came in when it felt what belonged to them is being shared by few people. You go to the north, of the north that does not even have anything that goes to do with oil, they now benefit more. People are rich, they are said, because of the corruption. That now made some group of people to say no. Instead of us not getting what belongs to us, let's make it nobody should get it. So it's corruption. If you go to Tenza, they dwell in oil all through, but they use that oil basically to develop that place more. Delta State had its fair share of the crisis as individuals and communities laid claims to oil spots. This crippled economic activities. It was a crisis that could have been managed, but because of seeming challenges in engagement and approach of handling the agitations in the Niger Delta, it was badly managed and that led to the massive destruction and that hurt the economy so badly. Upon assumption of office, Governor Kaur's administration in 2015 realized that his vision for a prosperous and economically buoyant Delta was largely dependent on his ability to restore peace on all frontiers, which includes building trust and confidence among the different ethnic groups in the state. Whatever we've been able to do in this state is because our traditional rulers have done a lot in their various communities to ensure that Delta State operates in a peaceful environment. Your Royal Majesties, I must thank you all for all your efforts to ensure peace in your domain and the partnership that you have offered us as your sons in government to be able to have a peaceful environment to deliver on the projects and programs that we have initiated since we came into office in 2015. Since Governor Koa came in, since 2015 to date, the peaceful disposition of Delta State has attained unequal heights, like it has surpassed its predecessors. And when there is peace, there is development. So we've been enjoying peace. So kudos to Governor Koa. Apart from the town hall meetings, citizen diplomacy became imperative to engage the people to create much needed peace to foster development. To this extent, Governor Fanyakoa established a peace building and conflict resolution committee headed by Edwin Uzo. The committee's efforts have resolved the age-long crisis, which has aided speedy economic development and growth in Delta State. Since I zoomed it to here, I've come across over 800 cases. And out of this number of cases, 85% has been settled. And I thank God for the life of the governor, for his continuous support to this department, because uh, reports we give to him is revised back gives us encouragement. The even spread of development across the senatorial districts also fast-tracked development and business growth. For instance, the building of roads aided in no small measure in the relocation of businesses to other areas outside the capital territory area. Senator Dr. Ifan Yokowa is a man of the people. He's a governor with tactics, a man who knows what he's doing. He prepared himself to be governor. And if you see the way he has well articulated his promises and plan for Delta State, we call him the roadmaster. Since we have been seeing people that are covering us, nobody like a come. No street that have not been tagged. Not only that, the infrastructure, the environment shows that everybody will benefit. If you go around Delta State, you know, there are a lot of changes. Roads all over the place, building schools, empowering people. Also, the various security architecture and committees established 
have culminated in checkmating activities of criminals. This has helped to steer the state in the right direction as Delta now enjoys a favorable investment climate that led to exponential growth in the state. Our men are virtually at all nooks and crannies, conducting stop and search, smoking out criminals from their various hideouts with a view to ensuring that criminals do not have a hiding place everywhere from here to Wari, Sapele, Ugeli. There's peace everywhere. With the state having a measure of peace, the governor had the confidence of building hardcore infrastructure like roads, markets, schools, hospitals, mechanic village, sports facilities, etc. With peace being enjoyed in the state, it is logical businesses will bloom and the state grows into an economic hub. Delta is now a major economic hub with the expansion of existing businesses as well as springing up of new ones, both retail and mega shops. The quantum investment in both physical and non-physical infrastructure well thought out and implemented policies by the okoa led administration has triggered and set in quantum in business and economy. Asaba as a city has a structure and architectural design to road connectivity and the government of Delta State has a way of selectively assigning security personnel to certain destinations and this helps to make Asaba generally a safe space to stay, both to reside and to do business. So an Igbo man like me and so many other of my brothers find Asaba as a safe heaven for business. A vibrant transportation sector is no doubt key to economic development and business growth. With the benefit of this knowledge, the Okoa-led administration concessioned the Asaba International Airport for optimal performance to further boost the business and economic frontiers of Delta State. This was not all. The government also signed an MOU with God is Good Motors for better running and management of the state-owned Delta Line transport fleet. This singular gesture saw to the acquisition of a modern fleet of cars. I kept using Delta Line because it has really improved compared to before. Now, the vehicles, the drivers, the way they conduct themselves. There was a period I came, there was a little kind of chaos. The way they handled it was professional and I loved it. We thank Governor Okowa for the good work he's doing for us in Delta State because how do you see this kind of a thing? It's part of the nation. Anywhere we go, part of the nation, part of the nation. We want to offer the traveling public in Delta State and neighboring states an opportunity to go uh, from here to many cities in Nigeria and eventually also outside Nigeria. We want to be the hub for the traveling public, not only for business travel, family travel, but also eventually for cargo. So this airport is only seeing the beginning of our expansion plan. We, the Asaba people, grateful to have him as our governor. I'm not here to sing praises. The governor is a down to earth man. Today in Asaba, about seven, eight, you see flight coming in and flight going out. It wasn't so before his coming. Of course, the airport was sighted there. At the time, they stopped flights from coming for because of um, the runways. Not just improving the runways, not just improving the structures there on ground, but some of the night uh, landing facilities. That is something to be proud of. The favorable investment climate that pervades Delta has propelled major growth and expansion in the oil and gas sector of the state. Beyond already existing IOCs expanding their horizon within the shores of Delta, other oil and gas companies are equally planting their roots in Delta. A typical example is the emergence of the OPAC refinery cited in Kwale. First of all, we give kudos to the enabling law, the local content art. And then secondly, we also give kudos to the Kweme himself. His name will be in history that he has created more neighboring environment to assist a refinery of this nature. 
Interestingly, most of the time, these petrol stations share the same location with either an eatery, supermarket, or hair salon. This increases consumer experience and promotes economic activities in one location alone, which in turn increases the need for more paid workers and boosts revenue. Once you come into a place, you have a mind to buy food, and you get in, you see a boutique, you get something, you move down, you see a supermarket, you move down, you see an eatery, there just behind there you see an ATM, beside it there you see a motor park. So you see that whatever you're actually looking for at that point in time is already embedded in a particular place. And generally, it also increases the awareness or the beautification that Asaba is just a business hub. In almost eight years of Okoa's government, the hospitality profile of the state has been boosted with various hotels and relaxation centers springing up. We made our feasibility studies before we put this here and in our course of going around we discovered that Ataba is one of the fastest developing states and they're one of the most beautiful states and we also look at present and massive developments from the present governor how he has been able to encourage tourism, which is also another good sector for income to any states. Smart Delta. The recently constructed and inaugurated Delta State Film Village and Miriam Babengida Leisure Park remains one of the signature projects of the Okoa led administration that has not only attracted road projects to the location and neighboring communities but has helped Deltans who once dreamt of delving into the entertainment industry to realize their dreams. It is a tourist delight as the facility houses so much in leisure, including a zoo. While the film village has already been dubbed Integrated Nollywood Complex as everything needed for filmmaking, acting and production is available in the project. These are real-time economic and business growth associated with good policy implementation. Before now, if they want to shoot films in Asaba here, they will come and play with me, please, we want to use a part of your palace. But now, this is a thing of the past. There is a film village, it's so beautiful for them, it, that's where they go to now. Some of my subjects are now going into the film industry, you know, because of the exposure and the impact of the film village. And uh, it will be a thing of joy if uh, in the nearest future, you know, I see them becoming international actors and actresses, you know, I'll be very, very glad. And this is an opportunity that the present administration, especially Senator Okowa, has given to us. It's not like other you know, government projects they do and you see it's not of high quality. This is awesome. I'm a musician. I can come here to shoot my videos. Thank you, sir. You make it. Governor Fanyakoa has recorded appreciable progress in his efforts at building modern markets in the three senatorial districts. This is to enhance the socio-economic growth of the state. This has gone a long way in strengthening the local economy as markets and commodities are linked to end users. I have never traveled to Lagos, I have never traveled to Wari, but I have been hearing about the market in that side. It's just like this market in Abu. If Wari people come, Lagos people come, Abuja come, Asaba come, Onicha come, anywhere come, we go they happy because our market go to do it and go they boom. Well, well. I thank Okawa for making it possible for us to have this type of market in uh, a castle. This is the first governor so far that has deemed it fit. Uh, yes, Riverine area, where the oil is coming from. Let us give them back their oil uh, dividends. That's why you are seeing this uh, Bluetooth ultra modern market right in Bluetooth, heartland of uh, no regret. Coming to Bluetooth to do job is not easy because the jobs here is three times upland. It's a good achievement to Bluetooth people and environs. Not long ago, the novel Ogeye floating market built on the Atlantic Ocean was commissioned for use by the PDP National Chairman, Senator Iyoche Ayu. The nation is taking note of your commitment to the development of your people. This is actually an international meeting point. I'm happy the Delta State Government recognized this and has reconstructed this and I hope the next government of Sheriff we expand this market far beyond the scope that 
is here today. The people's verdicts on this wonder on the Atlantic Ocean, only accessible by sea or by air, is inspiring. This infrastructure has greatly enhanced the business outlook in the riverine areas. This market is going to assist a lot of communities from different states. Oye is the nerve center of the entire Benin River. So with the indigenous, we are very happy for what the governor have done. Okoa, the way you build this uh, market for Ufuri, the Migu, you make we get big market in Oye. You make we big. Our name go front. Ghana everywhere. We call him the market come. Make market with we. Okowa God will bless you. Governor Kowa's government has produced thousands of entrepreneurs in various skills through the Skills Training Entrepreneurship Program STEP, the Youth Agricultural Empowerment Program YAGEP, Rural Youth Skills Acquisition Program RISA, the Girls Entrepreneurial Skills Training Program JUST. Women Empowerment and Skills Acquisition Program, WESA. These platforms have not only tackled unemployment, but have increased the business and entrepreneurial profile of the state. Okowa strives to excel, is cut out for excellence. The human capital development model is implemented, is very original, and is taking the youth out of the streets, taking them away from crime, taking them away from violence and restiveness. I see them testifying in the media, uh, or some of them even testify live, how that opportunity given to them has transformed their lives. It takes a completely detribalized governor to do what Sokowa is doing. It's so heartbreaking to see that Dr. Governor Ifan Yokowa is about leaving the seats. His regime has really helped so many young deltas and others. My family alone, they have benefited so much that if he leaves the seat, it will be so painful because I don't know if any other governor will be like him. I just wish if it was in my power, I would keep him there to rule, to rule forever. Just recently, 125 undergraduates from seven Delta State-owned tertiary institutions benefited from the Tertiary Institution Entrepreneurship Program, TEP. The governor, who was represented by the Commissioner for Information, Mr. Charles Anyago, revealed the essence of the TEP initiative. Take a listen. Senator Dr. Ifan Okowa came up with what I call today as the marketing scheme, which is the smart agenda. And the number one on that agenda is strategic wealth creation through job creation. And what are we doing today? We are giving vent to that particular number one item in the five-point agenda could name SMART to strategically make money available to the people, not by girls giving them money, but teaching them how to fish and eventually making them to become fishermen. What we're also doing today, it also underlines and possibly underscores what we have said that up to the 28th of May, 2023, that we will continue to work. And you can see that even with just a few weeks to the end of our administration, we are still empowering Deltans. We also spoke to the beneficiaries at the event, and this is what they had to say. I'll be thinking on how I will start to make up business without funds and some of the equipment. But I'm very happy that the government have really come to our aid for giving us these startup kids. I'm very, very, very happy. It is a truism that MSMEs are the engine room of economic growth. So, the World Bank, the federal government in conjunction with the Delta State government have initiated the Stimulus Intervention Programme to facilitate economic recovery for MSMEs impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic through a special purpose vehicle termed Delta Cares. I want to congratulate you as one of the beneficiaries of the small business. It is my prayer that the Lord God will bless your business and cause you to blossom. And as you blossom, please take some other Deltans along with you. The program is evidence of Governor Kowal's compassion for his people and commitment to reviving the state economy. During the COVID-19, I suffered a loss because staying indoor, you know, the business did not strive and I could not be able to pay my workers and I could not even produce to market. So the whole thing just crumpled somehow. But I thank God for this Kowal initiative that's uh, bringing hope to my business. Back.
If my business was collapsed, there is no way to, even if you want to go and borrow, the interest will almost even give you PP and die. So my, even my shop was closed down. So I thank our amiable governor, or Kowa. God should bless him for this he has done for me. Artisans in Delta State were not left behind in the area of empowerment by their Kowa-led administration. This has also stimulated the growth of small and medium enterprises in the state. This country can only grow when we are able to gradually lift our people from poverty to a place where they can find a space and say of a truth, we are standing, we are able to take care of our family. We must learn to lift our people from the very micro level and cause them to grow gradually but steadily to a state where they can say they have defeated poverty. I thank you and for all those who are receiving their support program in this very event. Congratulations to you. The next batch will also receive theirs. And it is my prayer that there will be a continuation with subsequent governments. Before now, the association or even the artisan body entirely, they were nowhere in the record of Delta State government. It is under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. Ifan Yokoa that we had a forum that unites all the artisan body. Some of the butchers have been given a grant. Some of them who does not have enough capital to run their businesses has been empowered through the government. Also lauded by Deltons is the removal of bureaucratic bottlenecks and the high cost and delays associated with acquiring legal titles to landed property. In Delta State, the process of obtaining CFO has become faster, thereby easing the stress of doing business in the state. This has encouraged investors to come, live and set up businesses. Okoa-led administration has certain policies that promotes real estate. Such policies include easy access to CFO. CFO that used to take basically one, two years or more, now takes about three months for you to get your certificate of occupancy on your lands. Now, this is one of the basic factors that promotes commerce. For property developers in Delta State, the state has not only become a haven, but their core-led governments is strategic in ensuring that real estate businesses thrive in the state. Today, the bill to prohibit forceful entry and illegal occupation of the property and violent and fraudulent conduct with public and private landed property is being enforced. The property developers in Delta State have already started enjoying the state public and private uh, properties protection bill 2018, which his executive owner has signed into law. Ever since they enacted that law in the Delta State House of Assembly and the, the governor gave his assent, we the developers we have been enjoying it. We no longer have all these uh, youths coming to disturb our side, unnecessary levies, all sorts of that. Through the public-private partnership, the Okoa-led administration has attracted high-impact private sector investment along the agricultural value chain. This facility which we have all gone around today was made possible by the vision of His Excellency. When about a little more than four years ago, I reached out to him to say, this is what we want to do. He immediately bought into it and he has given us all the support we need to bring this project to fruition. We believe in this worthy partnership because beyond the fact that it will help to grow the economy of this environment, we are very mindful of the fact that uh, it's going to generate a lot of employment for our people. I'm told that we already have about 300 persons working on a daily basis in this place. And I do believe that by the time we, the mail comes in place, we're going to have many more people engaged. With the numerous economic gains enjoyed in almost eight years of the Okoa-led administration, Deltons are saying that the smart agenda mantra has been well translated from paper to the homes and businesses of Deltons. As Delta State gets stronger, as promised by Governor Ifanyi Okoa.
feedback segment. This week, we got a commendation on our Instagram platform from Peace Joy and it treats. I want to say kudos to Governor Okowa for the good peace and economic growth Deltans have enjoyed in the last eight years. I want to urge all Deltans and all Nigerians and persons from across the world to continue to watch Smart Delta. They're doing so well. It's a good means of communication of what we do in Delta State. I'm quite excited that they've been getting the information out there. If you want to know a lot about what is going on in governance and development in Delta State, continue to watch Smart Delta. You will definitely be able to get all the information that you require. Text your questions to 0701337589 or send us a DM to all our social media platforms. You better run, run, come. Come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa is the do you better. Run, come. Come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa is the do. I see your job and wealth creation in Delta. Make the youth say them hila. Okowa. I see good roads everywhere in Delta. Make the people say them cola. Come live in Delta. Tell me I say. Come in Delta. Come explore the potentials of our state.